Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first, no matter what's going on in your life. If you live for God, live for God. You know, he has a plan for you. He has a plan for us all. We just got to pay attention and see what his plan is. We got to ask him and seek him. You know, when we was young, we had our own idea of this is what I'm going to be when I grow up. This is what I'm going to do. But let's put it this way. You get it like the God, that can change just like this. Because now you're going to start operating in his will. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to read one of my favorite conversion stories in the Bible. It's a bit of, I like uh, Ruth's. Ruth's conversion story is a good one. And this is one. John chapter 9. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And the disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? Did this man or his parents that he was born blind? Now watch how Jesus answered this question. Jesus answered, Neither have this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Now first of all, we know that we're all born in sin. We also realize, according to the Bible, that everybody got to work out their own salvation. So no matter how the child was born, you understand? He said, but that the works of God should be made manifest, right? So think about all these people born with different infirmities and stuff like that. The doctors and everybody in this world will blame you. But God said it's not your fault. I can fix it. Maybe he was born like this to show my works. And that goes for any illness, any disease, any mental disorder. We're supposed to be healing folks. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. It's the only time when you'll see Jesus use outside objects as much. But this time he did. He didn't have to. I believe he just did it. And said it to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. I was talking about the, the ruler back in the day with Elijah. He told him to go wash in the Jordan seven times, which is by interpretation, sent. He went this way. Now think about it. He said, my sheep know my voice, right? They won't listen to the voice of Thomas. So first of all, he had already heard the Lord's voice when the Lord said, go wash, which is by turn sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. You see, his sheep going to do what he asked them to do. The neighbors, therefore, they which before had seen him that was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? You see, that's why God wants to cure, cure a lot of ailments. It's another conversion story in regards to Acts when a man that was lame came and approached Peter. And Peter said, Silver and gold I have none, but things that I do have I give to you. Walk. Hmm. Another conversion story. Some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him. But he said, I am he. Now, how can people be that confused? You know if this was the blind man, blind man you saw every day. Look at the devil. Some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him, but said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, how were thine eyes open? He answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay. And anointed my eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. And then they said there unto him, Where is he? He said, I know that. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. Why they want to bring? They bring everybody to the Pharisees. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon my eyes, and I washed, and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God. Because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Wow. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. They said to the blind man again, what says thou of him that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, he is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind 
and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. Mm. And it's, it's crazy about the Jews, the, the one that called themselves Jews. They still don't believe Jesus is the Christ to this day. That's why they already bringing up their own Messiah. Which is, you know what that is, the Antichrist, right? And they asked him, saying, is this your son, who we, you say was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, we know this, this is our son, and that he was born blind. But by what means he now see him, we know not. Or who had opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him, he shall speak of himself. Now watch why they did this. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. And that probably still goes on today. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Now let's just think about this. We say deny me before men. So the, the parents believed him. But at this point in time, they denied the fact. Have you done that before? If you haven't, don't do it. Then again, called they the blind, the mind that was blind, and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then say to him again, What did he do to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered, I have told you already, and you did not hear. Wherefore would you hear it again? Will you also be his disciple? So the dude, not only is his eyes open, he got a boldness about him because of the miracle that has performed on him. Then they reverent him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciple. We know that God speaketh to Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from hence where he is. The man answered said unto him, Why herein is a marvelous thing that you know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened my eyes? Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if a man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man had opened the eyes of one that was blind? If this man were not of God, he couldn't do nothing. They answered and said unto him, Thou was altogether born in sin, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. So you can see also that he, with the healing came a little knowledge. That's why the, the Jews, like the Pharisees, like, hey, you going to teach us now? That's how it works. When you give your life to the Lord, the Lord, he gives you a little bit of knowledge here and there. Just enough. He said, I would give you words to say when it's time to say it. Look at this. Prophecy right in your face. If you go back to the other chapter before this, he was kind of talking about it. But that's a whole other story. Jesus heard they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said it to him, Does thou believe of the, of the Son of God? He answered, Who is he? Lord, that I might believe on him. And Jesus said it to him, Thou hast both seen him, and is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. How do you know he really believed? Because he was healed. He believed before that. He just wanted to get confirmation. And guess what? In your life as a Christian, you might give your life to God today. But he was going to give confirmation for you too. And Jesus said, For judgment I am coming to this world, that they which see might see, and they that which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remain. He talked about them right in their face. Wow. But I love this story. Went to the parents, went to this person, went to this person. Still wouldn't believe. People in the neighborhood know the dude was blind. But they didn't believe it. They think it's made up. That's how they did the whole, even when Jesus uh, was resurrected, they started telling lies and rumors about, hey, make it like his disciples came and got him. They didn't make movies crazy like the Da Vinci Code. Jesus had kids. But y'all better be careful out here. Some of these people in this world, all they want to do is make you doubt. But the thing is, like he said, my sheep know my voice. Now let's go back to the beginning where he was saying. He's I'm telling y'all about these ailments. People are like, I was born this way. 
there is a solution. There is a solution to this. Be born again. And he also telling you, you can't blame your parents. Now, your parents will be blamed for what they did, will be judged according to what they do in regards to the word, in regards to training your children. They will be accountable for that. But you are accountable for your own actions and your own ways. You can't go through life blaming your parents for nothing. Jesus just told you that is not the case. Well, my parents were mean and this and that. Well, let's put it this way. There is still a solution. Be born again just like this man right here. Have your eyes open. Then you'll stop trying to point the finger at your family. Well, I'm like this because my mom was like this. I'm like this because uh, my dad. That's, that, that's what that chain breaker talk about. And people use that for everything. I'm like my parents. You may have the characteristics of your parents. But with God, he can change you. And some of the ailments you have, your parents don't have. So how can you say it's your parents' fault? Like, if there are parents out there that are straight and kids that are gay or homosexual or trans or whatever, how can that be the kids' fault, the parents' fault? That's what the world want to lead you to believe. But the truth of the matter, his sheep know his voice. Your parents ain't held accountable for what you do. And you're not held accountable for what your parents do. You're held accountable for yourself. You know, if you read the Bible, God always called people singular, one person at a time. You. He didn't say, Matthew, come to me. And I'm going to, when I, when, I, when I save you, that automatically saves the rest of your family. It doesn't work that way. Everybody got to come to him individually. You know, even in Corinthians, he said to a man, how do you know if you can save your wife? Or how, a woman, you know if you can save your husband? You don't know. But the Bible says you may be made one flesh. Well, you one flesh, but you're still accountable for each other's individual sin. It's simple. Nobody's held accountable for somebody else's sin. The blame game does not work. Throughout the Bible. It never worked. It didn't work in Genesis. It didn't work with Cain. It didn't work. Never. It's all about you. Stop the blame game, people. Let me pause and I will continue.